Hello. So, in this video, uh, we're going to be obviously talking about polynomials, and in particular, we're going to be talking about how the degree and local extrema are related to one another. So, in the last video, we talked about um, polynomials and absolute extrema, and in particular, uh, we use this idea of sort of n-term behavior, this sort of hand wavy thing, because we don't have limits yet, um, and deduced or sort of determined, right, that um, it was really dependent on the degree as to whether or not it had absolute extrema and sort of the minimum absolute extrema that there were. So, uh, recalling then, if we have some polynomial um, and that polynomial has some uh, even degree versus odd degree, We figured out that, so maybe, maybe write this, and spoiler alert, this will be for a bunch of stuff here. Uh, so for even degree, we figured out that it had to have at least one absolute extrema. And for odd degree, in fact, it couldn't have any absolute extrema. And so our sort of go-to example, which I'm going to sort of jot off to the side here so they can refer to it later. Um, so we had sort of the play examples, right, where we had um, the standard parabola, this sort of x squared or even degree looking one, and the uh, cubic, this x cubed one for the, for the odd degree one, right? That lighting is a little, little strange. Let me see if I can improve that a little. There we go. Hopefully that shows up a little better. Um, okay, so we saw, right, that for the even degree, depending on whether the leading term, right, that leading coefficient was positive, negative, if the leading term had an even degree, it would have a max or a min. Specifically, you'd have at least one absolute, whereas over here, there's no absolute because they're going in opposite directions. So now we're going to talk about relative extrema. But remember that absolute extrema are relative extrema as well, right? So if I know I have an absolute extrema, then I have at least that many uh, relative extrema, right? So again, in our even example here, uh, our sort of play example, because it has an absolute extrema, it must have at least one relative extrema because it's the same place. Whereas, as we can see for the odd ones, I don't have any uh, absolute. It may still have relative, but it's possible that it actually doesn't have any at all. So in fact, back to my uh, example over here, the minimum, minimum number of uh, relative extrema, we can sort of use that information from the absolute extrema to get that. So this then, is really minimum for uh, relative extrema. Let's see if I can put in the table here. So we know something about it. We know that there's some minimum number, this one and zero, okay? All right, so what else do we know? So remember what uh, it means, right? Remember what it means to have a local extrema. A local extrema has to do with how um, the graph bends, right? So like we know that this is here, so use a different color if it shows up differently. Uh, here, this is an absolute and local extreme, extrema. Oops, totally forgot a letter there. Sorry, uh, extrema, which I'm just abbreviating here with ext. So we know that's there because remember the whole point of the local extrema is that it sort of bends away, right, in some local area. So in some small area, it's bending away because sort of absolutely it's bending away. So if I look at sort of another play example, um, so now I'm going to draw sort of just a messy form of a, of a function. Let's say I had a, a function 
I sorry, yeah, polynomial specifically, where it went sort of down, up, down, up, it went like this. Okay. Now I want to emphasize a number of things here, but before I do, let me point out the local extrema are the sort of highest or lowest point in some small area around it, remember? So and specifically, I have one sort of at the bottom of the trough down here. I have one at the top of that bump there. I have one down here, right? So I have three local extrema there. Now, I want to emphasize a point because I'm going to do I'm going to do some stuff that I. I uh, we don't really have the tools to do in this class, um, so I'm not really going to do it out. I'm going to hand wave a little uh, so that I don't you know, lose you guys with a bunch of algebra and stuff. So I want to make a point very, very clear that just having a graph, I know really almost nothing about the degree of this polynomial. Okay, I, I know a little bit, right? So for example, um, they're both, their end term behavior, because of how I drew the arrows, are both going up. So that tells me that it's going to be an even degree, right? That's the thing that we talked about in the last video about absolute extrema, right? If they're both going the same direction, that tells me it's an even degree. If they're going in opposite directions, it tells me it's an odd degree. So I know this has to be an even degree. Moreover, um, I know a little bit more from the fundamental theorem of algebra. So if you remember, our friend, the fundamental theorem of algebra, tells us about the zeros of the function. In particular, we have one, two, three, four, and again, that's supposed to be a different color, but it really doesn't show up well, sorry. So this is uh, four um, zeros. So let me, yeah, that doesn't really, you can't see that at all. Let me make it a different color. So, of course, color over color over color is probably not gonna work either, so bear with me for a second here. So I'm going to make them nice and big so you can see. So these points where it's crossing the axis are the zeros. So I have four zeros. OK, so by the fundamental theorem of algebra then, that told us that um, the number of zeros was at most real zeros, right? Because real zeros are where it's crossing the axis. There might be imaginary zeros, but there's not really any uh, way to tell that from the graph at this point. Um, again, that's something sort of beyond the scope of what we're doing here. So for the sake of this class right now, um, I know there are four zeros. Fundamental theorem of algebra tells me that the degree has to be, um, or I should say, the fundamental theorem of algebra says that the number of zeros is at most the degree. The other way of saying that is the degree is at least the number of real zeros. So I know the degree is at least 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is at least degree 4. And I know it's even degree. So I will stress that these, these two pieces of information, you should absolutely be able to do this right now. And in fact, these are sort of common exam questions, hint, hint. Um, to have a graph, look at it, and say whether it's even or odd, and what the sort of minimal degree has to be, right? It has to be at least degree four. What I want to stress, though, is just looking at this graph, I don't know if it is degree four. There's no reason to think it has to be degree four. It could be degree six, eight, 12, any even number that is at least four. It could be degree 500 for all I know, okay? But the piece I'm going to do, the piece I'm going to assert right now, sort of hand wavy, that uh, we can't really do in this class. So just sort of maybe uh, take it on faith. But if you really want to know, um, feel free to sort of contact me or your instructor. I'm, I'm, we're happy to go through the math because we love math and we love doing this stuff. Um, but it's a little more involved. I don't want to do it in this video. So the thing I'm going to assert is that there is a fourth degree that does this, OK? So although I know that whatever drawing I drew is at least degree uh, four, I forget what I said, there is a degree four that does exactly this. Okay, I don't know if I said degree three. 
I meant four if I did. <laughs> so there is a degree four that does exactly this, okay? And the reason I want to point that out is that this allows us, this sort of observation, um, links between the two, a information about the degree and the sort of most uh, number of local extrema that we can get. So in particular, and this is the part where you know I'm, I'm doing a little hand waving here, I know that the maximum number of extrema is for whatever the degree is, so let me go back here. Just to sort of keep track as of what I'm gonna write, I'm gonna make these different letters um, purely for the sake of sort of being able to tell the difference. There's no reason I have to do that, I'm just gonna do it. So even degree, let's say this is um, degree N, and this is degree M, okay? Then the maximum degree for the even, uh, sorry, the maximum number of relative extrema for an nth degree even polynomial is going to be, so here I had a degree four with one, two, three, four zeros, and it has one, two, three local extrema, meaning I'm gonna get n minus one, okay? And it turns out that the same is gonna be true for odd, m minus one. So in general, and maybe I'll just put that note down here, for any polynomial at all ever, even odd doesn't matter, the maximum number is going to be the degree of the polynomial minus one, okay? That looks like PDY, which is not at all what I mean. Polynomial, okay? Sorry, I'm being a bit of a perfectionist here, but there we go. All right. So with that little bit of hand waving aside, we know that the maximum number then Right, we have some maximum value that we can have for local extrema. Meaning we can't go crazy, we can't have a polynomial that's degree three with 57 local extrema. Can't happen. The most you can have is going to be the degree minus one, okay? Now, pointing out here um, that this sort of works nicely, uh, if we think of even degree, sort of smallest natural even degree to consider would be uh, the quadratic. Technically, we could talk about zero, but that's like a weird function. We're not gonna worry about that right now. So an even degree, degree two, would be the quadratic, this, right? And that claim is that it has a minimum of one, and its maximum is going to be two minus one, so its maximum is also one. So we know that a quadratic has exactly one relative extrema always. And in fact, it's going to be the vertex, wherever the absolute extrema is, that point where it's sort of bending away, right? With fourth degree, I could have uh, one up to theoretically three uh, local extrema, although we're gonna comment some more on that in a minute. For an odd degree, we might have none. That would be what our sort of example over here is. And the claim is we could have up to two. So for example, if I did another sort of uh, mock cubic, I could have a cubic that looks like this. Okay, so this is, this is a type of cubic. I'm not gonna bother writing an equation because that's not the point. But the point is, is that I have two local extrema here, right? I still have no absolute extrema because they're going infinitely up and down, but I would, could have two maximum, okay? But it turns out we can do actually even a little bit better. We know the minimum, we know the maximum. Now I'm gonna ask, what about possible number? And what I mean by that is, okay, if we know that, uh, let's take the degree four example, right? So a degree four has, so degree four is even, it has at least one, and the claim is the maximum is three. 
So can I really have one, two, or three local extrema? And as it turns out, the answer is going to be no, which is a little weird. Um, but it's actually one of those things that, again, is easiest to see with a geometric example. So I'm going to draw one more sort of play example as I go. So I have these. I'm going to, I guess, put it over here. I uh, just want to make sure I have room for all their stuff. Yeah, actually, I'll put it up here. All right. So let's say I'm going to draw some um, even power. So I'm going to have an even degree. Positive leading term. OK. So what does that mean? That means that it's going to be something like this, right? I have it going up and away in both directions. Its end term behavior is going up and positive. So I know that it's going to go eventually up here, OK? So I don't know what it does in the meantime, but I could come down and say turn, OK? So this is, if I'm keeping track, my first local extrema right here. Okay. Now, I could just go up. That would be a cubic, right? That would be a, a cubic looking, although shifted. Um, and I could go up in a way and it'd be set. That would be an example of one uh, absolute extrema. Uh, sorry, one relative extrema, also absolute, but one relative extrema. What happens if I turn again, though? So now I have a second local extrema. So here's the problem. If I, I'm going to do this in a different color. Uh, let me maybe do this one. If I continue then, I have an issue. I'm trying to make that light because I don't want to do this. But if I tried to continue, I'm going to have an issue because now they're going different directions. And it has to be an odd degree, and that's not what I want, right? So I can't keep going. I have to turn to come back. So I can't really have two local extrema because at some point I need to turn back in order to be going the right direction in order to be an even degree, which will generate another local extrema. Right? So in order to make sure that it's even degree, that I keep going, I have to turn back eventually. So really, what this is telling us, because if I, so if I tried to have two, it doesn't work because I go in the wrong direction, so I have to have at least three. But if I try to have four, if I try to bend one more time, it would be going in the wrong direction. I have to add another one to come back up. So what this sort of pattern is telling us is that if, I'm, if I think about it as adding an extrema as I'm drawing, I have to add, uh, which I'm putting in quotes because you don't, like, the polynomial has however many extrema it has, right? So uh, when I say add, I'm talking about you know the possible number here. I have to add local extrema in pairs. So what that means is for an even degree, I'm going to have at least one. But if I want more than one, I can only sort of add to that one in pairs. Meaning I could have one. I can't have two, because then it would be going the wrong direction. So the next one would be three. I can't have four, because that's going in the wrong direction. So the next one is five. And that's going to keep going up to the maximum. But remember, n, the degree, is even. So if I subtract one, this is, in fact, an odd number, n minus 1. Okay, So these are all odds. right? If n is, say, uh, 8, then I would have 8 minus 1 is 7, so I'd have 1, 3, 5, 7 as the possible number. So another way of thinking about that is an even degree polynomial has an odd number of relative extrema, always. Okay, Same idea for the odd, though, because as we saw, right, if I only have one, I'd be going in the same direction, which I can't, because they're supposed to be going in opposite directions. So I can't have just one, I'd have to have two. And then I can't have three, because they'd be going the same direction. So then I have to have another one, four. It's the same deal. I have to add them in pairs, right? So I could start with zero. I could have none. 
but I can't have one, I'd have to have two. I can't have three, I'd have to have four, etc. Up to the degree minus one. But now remember, and this is why I did different letters, if the degree is odd, an odd minus one is even. So m minus one is actually an even number, even though n minus one is an odd number. So again, another way of thinking about this is that the odd degree polynomials have to have an even number of local extrema. So even degree has to have an odd number of local extrema. Odd degree have to have an even number of local extrema. Right? It's the, op it's the opposite of the, uh, the degree. Okay. So let me do uh, an example or two sort of in general. So let's say we have, for an example, uh, p of x the polynomial is uh, let's say 3x uh, to the fifth minus 16x squared plus 7x uh, to the sixth plus 4. Okay? So again, I'm sort of beating a dead horse with this on purpose. Um, by convention, we write this from the highest degree down, but we never want to assume somebody's doing that. So first step I'm going to do is take whatever I was given and rewrite it in the sort of correct conventional way, right? So this would be looking for the highest power, 7x. So that's 7x to the sixth, uh, plus next highest power is the fifth, so that's 3x to the fifth. Next highest power is going to be the square, so that's minus 16x squared, and finally plus 4, right? So my first sort of task is just to write it sort of in the right order. And then everything we know about the extrema is just based on the leading term. So really, I can ignore all of this other stuff when it comes to extrema, because the extrema are sort of um, dictated by the leading term. Right? It's one of those things where the leading term gives us all the information because of the end term behavior and information about that. Um, to be fair, the other stuff are affecting the local extrema, but it's doing it in ways that we can't um, tackle in this class. So in calculus, one of the major things you study in Calc 1 is actually finding the exact location of all of the local extrema, in which case you definitely need the whole polynomial. All we're talking about in this class is how many extrema there might be. And for that, all we need is the leading term. Okay. So here, the leading term is 7x to the sixth, okay? So for this, absolute extrema, I am going to have, right, so this is an even, so it even has one absolute, it has a positive leading term, um, right, the leading coefficient is positive, so this has uh, a, so if it's positive, it's going up and away, right, so it has an absolute max, so in particular, it, it has an absolute extrema. Um, oops, I, whew, I was thinking min. I wrote max for some reason. I'm pretty sure I even said max. I meant min. Min, there we go. Um, so it's, it's like this sort of situation. So it has an absolute minimum value. It might even have that value in more than one place. I can't tell that from here, but it has an absolute minimum value, okay? Uh, for relative extrema, So it's even, which means it has to have an odd number of them. In particular, it has to have at least the one, because it has this thing, right? So it has to have one possible up to its degree minus one. So an odd number up to six minus one is five. So it could have one, it could have three, and it could have five possible. So it definitely has at least one, because that's where the absolute one is. But it could have one, three, or five. And at this point, I don't actually know how to tell that. Um, as I said before, there are sort of some tools we could sort of use logic to get to to tell some information about that. But um, that's not something that we're going to be doing in this class uh, with sort of any real um, intense precision. That's really a Calc 1 thing. Okay. So that's exactly, this is what we have, right? So this is exactly what what the goal is. Our example, we've given some polynomial. 
rewrote it in sort of a nice form, pulled out the leading term that told us the absolute extrema and how many possible relative extrema there are. So let me do one more example, um, just so that we're all sort of on the same page. So let me do, uh, for example, um, let's do uh, q of x equals 2x to the fourth minus 3x to the fifth plus 1. Okay, so again, very first thing I will do, sort of Pavlovian reflex, which should be sort of always the very first thing you want to do, is rewrite this in the conventional form. So negative 3x to the fifth plus 2x to the fourth plus 1. I hammer this home because it is one of those things where really almost always you are handed it in the right conventional form, which means it gets really, really easy to just assume that's always the case. So the lion's share of problems that I see in this context, right, the lion's share of errors that students make come not from understanding what we've done here, but by looking at this and going, ah, the leading term is 2x to the fourth and running with it because they're so used to it being written the right way that they don't bother to keep reading and find out that it's not written the right way, right? So even though the vast majority of the time you're gonna be handed a polynomial in the, in the correct form with the leading term as the leading term, um, if what you're doing sort of entirely depends on the leading term, if you find yourself only looking at one term, you should really make sure it's the right term, right? So even though it'll almost always be the first one, check. Whenever you're doing something that depends on only the one term, just scan through and make sure it's the right one, okay? So here, my leading term is negative three x to the fifth. So for absolute extrema, This is odd, right, like these. So there is no absolute extrema, none. Okay, it really is that simple, that's it. Relative extrema. So it is possible, as we've seen like with a regular x cubed graph, it is very possible that this thing happens to have no relative extrema. But it could have more than that, right? So this is the whole thing. They add in pairs up to degree minus one. So the degree of the polynomial, right? That's the degree of the leading term, that's five. So it could have zero, two, or five minus one is four. So zero, two, or four. And that's it, all right? So again, the sort of two second recap version for relative extrema, um, the minimums we know basically based on the absolute extrema. So for even, you have at least one. For odd, you could have zero. The maximum number, no matter what the degree is, is the degree minus one. And then the possible is basically adding two to the minimum until you get to the maximum. So for even, it's one, three, five, seven, nine, dot, 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 until you get to whatever the degree minus one is. And for odd degree, it's gonna be zero two, four, six, eight, dot, 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 until you get to one minus the degree, right? So we have a couple examples where we did just that. Okay, and that is that.